Hi everybody, I'm Dina Proctor, creator of 3x3 Meditation and author of Madly Chasing Peace. I want to answer a question, um, speak to, I guess, my experience about a question that's been coming to me a lot lately, which is people are describing that they're feeling strain when they meditate or when they are trying to focus on something or trying to visualize something. There's a pain or a strain that's happening around the eye area or in the head feeling like a headache, feeling like um, there's this effort part or this kind of strain going on that I'm I'm getting the, the image when people describe it to me that's sort of up here in the head, behind the eyes, that sort of thing. So um, I, I want to speak to that particularly and also to any pain or strain that you feel in general when you're in a wellness practice because there are a couple things I think that, um, that, that happen. And this can also be if you feel like every time you sit down to meditate, you feel like you're falling asleep. Um, that's also something that happens. I think the strain, the feeling that I need to sleep, um, any, any sort of not great feeling that you're not, that you don't want to be feeling while you're meditating, it points to something that there's, there's a bit of resistance in there somewhere. And with the strain and the eye strain or the feeling like the head is having a headache or trying too hard or thinking too much is just pointing to trying too hard. That's really what it is, you know? Um, we try so hard to achieve so many things in our lives. We are based and given awards and merit on how much we are able to make things happen by our willpower and our strength and our motivation and that sort of thing. And so when we apply that same, I mean, why wouldn't we? That's what we do to succeed in a lot of other areas. And so when we bring that into meditation, it creates this feeling of stress or strain in the body. And it's completely unnecessary. And it's, you know, it doesn't feel good. So you know, it's not pointing you in the right direction. But you might be kind of like, well, how do I ease that? Or what would put me point me in the right direction. And so I want to bring up I did a topic on this um, a, a while ago, but I want to kind of bring up this concept in that we don't necessarily need to if we want to manifest something or create something or better something about our bodies or our relationships or our careers, we don't necessarily have to know what that's going to look like. And we do not need to visualize it in order to make it happen. And so that may be different than you may have heard before, but let me tell you or remind you my experience with this. When I was first starting to meditate and I was suicidal and alcoholic, I all I wanted was I didn't want to die. Well, I still wanted to, well, anyway, whatever. I, I was in this place of I didn't picture myself doing what I'm doing now. I didn't picture myself helping people or healing people. None of that was even on my radar. When I started meditating to the point where I had um, what I've described before and described in my book, this three-day experience in this state of higher consciousness, which is the highest state that I have ever been in while I've been in my physical body. And I know that many, many people around me have never experienced this. So it was a pretty dynamic and amazing experience. So that's what a lot of us are seeking, right? That's what we're seeking. It's like this place of no thought, this place of absolute peace, this place of knowing that all is well in the universe and um, the place of feeling guided every moment inside. You are completely and fully present in every single moment and experiencing the moment in its fullness and in its entirety. I mean, I'm really not doing the experience justice, but I hope you're, you understand what I'm pointing towards. That's what we look for when we meditate. We want to feel that expansiveness. We want to feel that place of ease, that place of knowing all is well, that place that the bigger picture and the universe and God really has our back and is pointing us in the right direction. We're in tune with our inner guidance. And um, that, that point for me, from being the worst point of my life to the best point of my life, only took me eight weeks. And in that eight week period, I didn't do any visualization. I didn't even know what visualization was. I All I did was just clear myself and aim to, my, my primary intention was to focus on my breathing. That was it. That was the entire structure that I was given in the entire structure that I, I knew how to do because I'd never done anything like that before. And I was not schooled in law of attraction and not schooled in manifesting. I didn't know anything about any of that. It was just to escape this horrible, painful feeling that I was feeling inside. Not to escape it, but to kind of transcend it or find healing from it, I guess you could say. So my point is, from being the worst point to the best point only took eight weeks. And during those eight weeks, I wasn't doing anything else. 
like I, I wasn't, you know, kind of going back and, and asking for forgiveness or looking at my internal blocks or w- what's happening that's making me so unhappy and suicide. Like, why is that happening? I wasn't doing any of that work. So it didn't require inner work at all for me to get to those places. And I'm not saying that inner work isn't good. You know, I've done a lot of inner work since then and had a lot of breakthroughs since then. So I'm not saying that it doesn't have a place. What I am saying is that sometimes that feeling of we need to effort or we need to try or we need to break through and we need to create something, we have this kind of goal in mind when we meditate. And so often that's the only thing that's getting in our way of being able to have this expansive, relaxing place of meditation. So when we're feeling that resistance around it, and that resistance could show up as a feeling like I need to sleep. I mean, it could be that you're just so sleep deprived that as soon as you sit still, your body tries to to just kind of go into sleep because it's so insanely sleep deprived. That's a possibility. But so many times, like I'll find myself, if I'm learning something new and feeling resistance towards it, I'm kind of like, you know. I take a nap right now it's just for whatever reason and I've seen this with other people too if I feel resistance to something or I feel like I'm not up for it falling asleep or that tendency to feel a little bit sleepy and tired sort of I feel that inside of myself so it could just be a bit of resistance if that's happened for you or if it's that strain in the brain or strain behind the eyes I really believe it's because we are trying so hard to achieve something or to make something happen so If it's happening while you're visualizing, keep in mind that you don't need to visualize. I never visualized. I never ever visualized what I do today, ever. I never had that as a goal. I'm not not setting goals around that. That's not, that was just born of inspiration and one breadcrumb being led in front of the other one without me seeing the, the full picture. So you don't necessarily have to know where you're going and you don't have to, Um, kind of make yourself point there or repeat things in a certain way or visualize things in a certain way. I'm not saying it's not effective. Of course it is. And I have, I I can't even say that I've really used, um, well, I have used visualization in particular ways. Like when I was lowering my cholesterol, I could visualize and I could feel that warm honey going through my bloodstream, you know, that healing serum that I was picturing. So I have used visualization in certain things like that, but I don't bring the visualization in to my meditation practice unless I was just completely inspired and I can't not visualize it because it feels so amazing to visualize it. So sometimes we're bringing it in too quickly. So the other video that I was that I have done before was called something around the lines of um, should I should I should I visualize or should I just allow? So that video may help you too with kind of finding the balance there. But it's really what feels the best for you because if you can open up that place of expansiveness in yourself and if you don't visualize a day in your life you can still achieve everything that you would ever want to achieve in your life without visualizing that's been my experience with it and it has its place and it's fun for me sometimes but it's not the majority of the meditation work that i do mine is more about creating space creating an opening inside of myself where inner wisdom you know you kind of clear it out and then the inner wisdom has place to to come in and that's not literally what's happening but that's how i feel when i'm meditating you know it's just like you're, you're breathing, you are connecting, you are allowing that flow of inner guidance to come through uninhibited. And there is no effort in that. It is the absence of effort when that's really, really flowing. So I hope that this helps you and I hope that you can be gentle with yourself. Um, you know, and if you're feeling something physical and you want to have a medical professional take a look at it or, um, you know, talk to somebody in your own life, I'm not here to give medical advice by any means. So if it feels like something that's that you need to take to that next level absolutely take care of yourself in the best way that you know how but I just kind of wanted to speak to in general what might be happening when you're feeling that heaviness or that strain um, when you're sitting when you're sitting to meditate so as always take what you like and leave the rest behind I hope this video was helpful for you and I'm so grateful and always happy to share um, insights and ideas and and um, thank you so much for joining me here in this space